developing an extended range electric vehicle for the Eco Car Challenge. As you can see, our vehicle currently doesn't have a powertrain in it. However, we're in the process of integrating our powertrain design into the vehicle so that it can drive within the next three weeks. Our vehicle's front powertrain features a 1.8 liter high compression ratio ethanol engine along with an 80 kilowatt electric motor generator. These two components are connected together via a twin clutch transmission design along with a single gear reduction gearbox. This front powertrain design allows us to operate either in series in the city or in parallel on the highway. In addition, our vehicle's rear powertrain features a 100 kilowatt electric motor that functions as the primary drive of the vehicle. Integrating these components into our vehicle requires us to develop controls at both the vehicle level and the component level. Our control challenge is to determine the optimal power split between the electric motors and the engine in real time, as well as to develop controls for subsystems like our engine. As we develop the controls for our vehicle, it's important that we test for safety and reliability to validate our code and to make sure that the driver driving the vehicle can be confident in the vehicle's performance. Developing vehicles in the past has been done by building a prototype that goes on the road and using that prototype to go and conduct laboratory experiments. The laboratory experiments have then led to the math-based part of the design. Then, going on, the, the vehicles now are actually developed in the reverse order. We begin with math-based models. The math-based models lead to laboratory experiments on the equipment and the design of the vehicle. Then the laboratory experiments lead to a completed vehicle that is actually ready for the road. DSpace has provided the OSU team an HIL hardware in the loop simulator. The simulator allows us to do mathematical models and laboratory experiments on their simulator and streamline the vehicle development process by testing the mathematical models on an actual hardware simulator that would take the place of a vehicle. This allows us to streamline the entire development process, getting software into the vehicle quicker and much more reliably. This is our hardware in the loop setup. It contains the models and electronics to act as a vehicle on the bench setup. This allows us to test our control hardware before the vehicle is ready for testing. Our team is designing two controllers on the hardware in the loop system. The controller on the left is the primary controller in charge of high level vehicle decisions and the controller on the right is our engine controller. Both of these controllers are connected to wiring harnesses with the vehicle networks and signals just as they will be in the car. Since the connections to our controllers are the same, we can move them to the vehicle with no additional changes. In order to increase the speed of our engine control development, we've developed three different types of engine models that help us perform different types of simulations that serve different purposes. Specifically, we've developed black box models, mean value models, and 1D gas dynamics models. These models vary in both their model fidelity and also the computation time that it takes to calculate. We can see a heavy dependence and increase in computation time as we increase the reality and the fidelity of our model. We have chosen to use mean value models for hardware in the loop development because of their good balance between model fidelity and computation time. In addition to having our vehicle controller connected to the hardware in the loop system, we also have connected our engine controller. Unlike the hybrid controller, which primarily uses signals from CAN buses, our engine controller uses CAN buses as well as other types of sensors like analog, digital, and resistive sensors. We are also connecting to high-speed digital signals like the encoder pulses, which allow us to detect the cam and engine crank positions uh, that are running inside of our simulations. All of these things combined allow us to connect to the engine controller through calibration software on this laptop, just as we would in the vehicle or in the engine dynamometer. The mean value engine models that the OSU EcoCar team has implemented in year two have allowed us to connect the engine controller to the hardware in the loop system in the same way that it is connected in the vehicle and also as it's connected in the engine dynamometer. This more advanced model has an increased number of system states that allow us to test the actual engine control functionality before we actually test it in the vehicle. For instance, these states like intake manifold pressure or exhaust temperature allow us to make decisions about spark timing in the engine, 
We can also monitor the spark timing commands from the engine, as seen here, or also the fuel injection commands. So this connection between the model and the actual hardware has allowed us to test the control strategies that we're developing. One of the main focuses of hardware in the loop simulation is to make sure that the vehicle operates safely and as designed in every operation mode, including faults and failures. So this means that we need to test the controller to make sure that it resolves faults correctly and also displays notifications to the driver to make faults clear and make the driver aware. To make this process easier for different software revisions and for every iteration of design, we can use automation scripting to run through the same tests every time, regardless of which software we're using. The benefit of automation testing is that we can start these tests and have them run without us needing to be here, so we can leave the room and wait for the results when we come back later. While the hardware in the loop simulation is running, we can see real-time displays of vehicle performance. On the left, we can see driver displays of the dash, dials, and gauges, as well as fuel economy estimations and vehicle speed traces. On the right, we can see vehicle mode displays, as well as the torque split among hybrid components. The hardware simulator was used to make the initial controls models. Those are then loaded into the vehicle, and we take the car on the road and we collect data and test the models. And then we go back and make a new revision based on the data that we've collected. What we've managed to do with EcoCar is mimic the entire OEM vehicle development process. For years we've been doing it on the mechanical side with computer automated design, and now HIL is a final piece of that development puzzle. Hardware in the loop is letting the students do advanced rapid control prototyping techniques well before they even get to the vehicle. This around the clock testing makes their vehicle control a lot safer while also giving them a platform to do off-board system optimization. Training students in these industry standard methods creates engineering graduates that hit the ground running when they get into the workforce.